Okay, so today we're going to continue on in chapter 3 and do um, take a look at how Prolog handles lists. So let's take a look at this first slide, figure 3.1 from our book. This is a uh, figure, a tree representation of the list and tennis tom skiing. Now, what did we say the basic structure is in, or the basic data type is in Prolog? The structure. And it has like a functor and then a parentheses and then arguments, right? So, um, the functor for a list in Prolog is literally the period, which in GNU Prolog, you have to single quote. Do you see what I mean? So like instead of saying parent parentheses, it's literally, as on this slide, quote, single quote, period, single quote. That's the functor for the list predicate. And how many, can you tell, can you tell based on, by this syntax, how many elements, how many, what's the arity of the period functor? Two. It's two. It has two arguments. Are you with me? And what are those arguments? The first one is, well, <laughs> it is. Excellent observation. The first one is the, is, the, is the car, and the second one is the what? Is the cutter, which ends in the what? The cutter of the last one is what? The empty. the empty list. Now, fortunately, in GNU Prolog, we don't actually have to write this out this cumbersome way. Fortunately, we have a, 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 a syntax, we have better syntax for this, and what we do is, this whole thing can, is written instead in list form using square brackets with the uh, elements of the list separated by commas. So, we're not going to use that dot. All right. So, to illustrate this, let's go do our shtick here. And um, we'll start off. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some... Uh, some demos that are not in, Pratt, in Pratt code. So let's start off by doing gprolog. And here, um, here's our first example of a list in, in gprolog. A left, a left bracket, a comma b comma c, and now we're going to say, now what's the equals? What, what's, what's the equals operator? I mean the equals symbol, what does that represent in prolog? Match, yeah. So we're going to say ABC match X. So if ABC match X, what do you suppose is going to happen? Yeah, it's just like saying five match X. Are you with me? Is that, are we good? Mm -hmm. And then, but now see you can do it to elements of the list. So, so check this out. If we have capital X, capital Y, capital Z, um, match, uh, little a, little b, little c. Now, you should be able to predict what this is going to do because do you see that this, this x, y, z is really a short, is really an abbreviation for what? For dot, parentheses, x, comma, dot, parentheses, y, comma, you, you see what I mean? And then it matches that, and, th and this is really an abbreviation, this is really an abbreviation for what? Dot parentheses A, comma, dot parentheses B, comma. So these are like structures, and it matches just like usual. So what should this be? This one's not difficult. What should this one be? A. Yeah, exactly. All right, is everybody good with that? And check this out. What about what about um, x little b big z match um, little a big y little a big y little c obviously. What? 
Yep, exactly, just like what you would expect. But now how about this? And you can have, we can have lists inside lists. So how about the list of the list, A, B, comma, C. Now what do you think is, is this? Match X, capital X, comma, capital Y. So what, what about this? Any? Mm hmm And Y equals C, right. Okay, and then how, and how about this? Um, how about, and we can actually, you know, just to show you, we can put A parentheses B. So that's the first element of the list. We can mix these and C parentheses element uh, argument cap, uh, capital X. Wait. Here, right. And if we match this with, and if we match this with Z and then C little A. Now, if we do this, now what will the matching have, what will match here? Obviously. <coughs> mm -hmm. well, well, just the A. Oh, X, right. Uh, yeah, X will be the little a, and what? Yeah, will be the structure AB. All right? All right, and what about car and cutter? Check this out. Suppose we have X match. Now, here's, here's the way the car and the cutter works. It's the vertical bar, right? So it's A, little a, vertical bar, list, B, C, D. and then list. Now, check this out. I, I, does anybody want to hazard a, does anybody want to hazard a guess on this one? Is that a list of one list? Well, the vertical bar, okay, the left of the vertical bar is the, the car. car and the right of the vertical bar is the so cutter. It, it is going to be the list A, B, C, D. Now, do you see how that works? So we don't say, this is not a function, it's a predicate. So that vertical bar separates in a list, the vertical bar just separates the what? The car on the left with the cutter on the right. And in, in, as, as in, in all lists, the car is an element and the cutter is a list. Now do you see how that, does everybody see how that works? So how do you extract the car of a list? You could do this, you could say, What's the car, and now car is capital C. Do you see what I mean? So that makes it a what? A variable. What's the car of, and now we're using an anonymous variable, right? So, so the car of this match A, B, A, B, C, D. So now what do you think? That anonymous variable is just like any other variable, but how will this match? Well, not quite, not quite that complicated. But the first one. What did you say at the first? The yeah, A is the car, and, and the other, one, other one's anonymous, so we don't, we don't, it's not going to, we, we didn't give it a name to print out. Are you with me? So it's car equals A. Does everybody see how that worked? Okay, and how would you extract the cutter? You would say what? Match anything, you know, match, match anything, and then ask for the cutter, CDR, all right? And then, and if we have the list um, A, B, C, D, then what is this going to be? Yeah, for the cutter, right? And of course, there's nothing to prevent you from extracting both the car and the cutter. So you could say car, cutter, match, A, A, B, C, D. <coughs> And that's how they get matched. Uh huh. No, no, there's no significant. As a matter of fact, the next demo is this. Let's just do it like this: x 
because those are just variables. Remember, anything that starts with a capital letter is just a variable. And I'm glad you asked that. See, look, list. The question was, is there any significance to the car and the cutter, the way we spelled it? See, look, it's in totally their placement. Do you see that's exactly the same thing? Now, is everybody clear on that? And normally we don't use car and cutter because, you know, that's from a different. <laughs> I mean, prologue people don't say car and cutter. Well, maybe they do, but there's no law against it. But anyway, car and cutter is not part of the vocab. All right? So let's do, um, so, therefore what, so therefore, what would happen if we said, if we said capital X match, um, let's do, wait, let's do one more, XY. Let's do one more, capital X, uh, vertical bar, uh, capital Y, match, um, now, what, what about this list? Now, from your experience in Scheme, do you know what this, can you predict what this will be? From your experience in Scheme, do you, can you predict what this will be? X will be the element A, and then what? And Y will be the empty list. Is everybody clear on that? So the empty list is, you know, just a empty square bracket. Is everybody good? And as we, I think this is similar to the one we did before, what would this be? What will this be? This will be similar to what we did before, right? List A, B, C, D. Yeah. All right, list A, B, C, D. And now, uh, but th these, can get a little, these can get a little more complicated because how about this? How about let's do X, vertical bar Y, and now let's match this with, you got to be careful about uh, with lists and lists. So w what if we did this? A, list B, C, D. Any X is A, but now what is now what is Y? Is it? Double list B C D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why do you say double list B C D? Because list B C D is an element two in the larger list. Right. Now think about that. Does everybody see the difference between the one we did just before that and this one? See, yeah, B, the list BCD is the second element of the list. Yeah, so it's the list of the second element of the list. Is everybody clear on that? But look, you guys, check this out. What if we did this? X vertical bar Y match, oh no, sorry, what if we do this, x vertical bar list y, now this you kind of have to get used to, match with um, the same thing that we did before, a uh, list a comma and then list b, c, d. Anyone want to hazard a guess on this one? This really makes you think with, with, with this really makes you think with um, unification. Just list B, C, D, single list. Yeah, for Y. X will still be A. And this time we're asking. What list? Yeah, how do you say that? It's hard to say, isn't it? But it is just the list B, C, D. Now, is everybody with me on this? This is, this is kind of subtle. I mean, you have to, we have to understand what is normally a list and what is. It's kind of like always remembering that the cutter, that the cutter is always a list in scheme. All right. Now how, about, now, how about this one? Here's something. Here's another one that might be surprising. Suppose we match. Suppose we say X match. And now we're going to say A, B, C. 
by themselves. And then we're going to put our vertical bar here. And then we're going to have list D, E, D, E, F, list, list. Now, what do you think this is going to be? Because now, what's on the left of the vertical bar? Not just what? Not just, what's to the left of the vertical bar? Not just a single element, right? Well, the vertical bar, just think of it, the vertical bar separates the car from the cutter of a list. And so normally what happens, you think of the normal one, the, the ones that we started with, the examples that we started with. And normally what happens is, to the right, the, the car, the nor, normally the, then, the, hmm? Then if there's no vertical bar, then how is there still a car in the cutter? The vertical bar is... Well, you're, you're matching, you're, you're, you're asking the... the to the left of the vertical bar represents the car, and to the right of the vertical bar represents the cutter. If you go back to those, those first examples that we did, the, the, the first ones that we did. So would it be uh, a list with the first element, the list A, B, C? Now, what does this show? Well, yeah, nice try. <laughs> but look, in, in, in the scheme, in scheme, what can the car be? Not just an element, but a list. well, not really a list, but multiple. multiple elements. Yeah, that's what this is saying, isn't it? Do you see what I mean? So it's a little more flexible than the car and the cutter and the cons with scheme. So everybody with me on this? This is a, this is a little this is a little surprising. And because we can have two things to the left of the vertical bar, check this out. So that's what that demo showed us. So check this out. Suppose we have capital X, and then we have um, comma, capital Y, and then the vertical bar, and then we have um, and then we have capital Z, all right? And now we're going to match that with just the plain list A. B, C. Now, so what, anybody want to predict this? X is A. Yeah, X is A, right, good. Y and Y is B, but now what is Z? C. Is it C or is it, list. or is the list C? list C? Yeah, you think it's list C? It's, I think it is too. Is everybody with me on this? All right. So that those the multiple multiple car we can have sets of multiple cars. Here, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Only this time instead of doing A B C, let's do A B C D. So now here, maybe this maybe this will actually make it a little more clear. Let's, so what will this be? A Y is and is the list C D right? And we could go on and on right? C D E. Oops. Yeah. And how about this then? How about how about um, how about x, y, z? How about x, y, z, and then um, vertical bar, and then capital A, and then we'll match that with um, A, B, C. What do you think? That's good. All right, A is the empty list, and then X, Y, Z are A, B, C, and then now. But now, what about this? Do you, do you what do you think? What do, what do you think about this? Probably what you expect is what you would. What do you expect would happen here if our list wasn't? If we, what what are we trying to do? We're trying to match the what the, you know the the elements in the car, and how many elements in the car are we trying to match? Three of them, but how many elements are, so what do you think is going to happen here? 
yeah, this one's going to fail. So no. Okay, so no match. Right? Is everybody, is everybody good with this? And how about this one? What about this one? How about capital X, uh, capital Y, lowercase a, match. Um, now, this is going to take a little thinking. Capital Z, lowercase b, capital Z. So now, what are we claiming? What are we trying to match? We're trying to match this with Z, B, Z, but this Z is the same thing as this Z. Is that possible? Yes. It, is, it is possible, and so what should it be? So what gets instantiated to what? X, yeah, X is instantiated to A, y is, B. y is B, and Z is A. Is everybody good? So just, this one is a little surprising. What about capital X comma Y, and then vertical bar um, capital Z? So what are we claiming this list is? We're claiming, we're, is that a capital Y? Capital Y. I want that to be a capital Y, and then, and then vertical. Sorry, capital X, capital Y, vertical bar, uh, capital Z, and then we're trying to match this with, with. Now watch this, um, A, and then vertical bar, W. Now, what's your first inclination here? Because we had this one previous that was. Uh, a couple previous ones that was a failure when the list wasn't long enough. No. Yeah, you would think it would be a no, wouldn't you? That's it's a little surprising. But actually it's not because what in this one up here, in this one up here where we had this this inability to match, what did we have? What were we what were we matching this with all the variables with? We were matching it with what? Yeah, with two elements that are that are not variables, right? They're constants, yeah. So there, but on the other hand, what is this saying? This w here is a variable, so this is a little surprising. So x matches with the a, and w is y vertical bar z. So think about that. That's a little surprising. All right, so now let's go ahead and look. Now let's do, um, let's take a look at ch3.pl. So here are, so here's the first um, few lines of um, chapter 3.pl. And let's go ahead and consult this. Consult quote ch3.pl quote print period. All right, so everything's written here. And now, now what we're going to do is we're going to use um, the matching to uh, write predicates to get some processing for us. And the first little elementary one here is called third element. So if we come up here and take a look at the, def at the, uh, at the uh, specification for third element, what does it say here? We have this predicate up here called third underscore element and it, and it has two arguments, capital L and capital X. And this next line of comment says, X is the third element of list L. All right, X is the third element of list L. Now before we actually take a look at how it's implemented up there, let's demo how, how this actually works. So check this, check out these queries. Let's do third, third element. Let's do third element, and now we're going to have the first argument be the list. A, B, C, D, E, F. All right, comma, and we're going to say capital W, H, A, T. What? Period. All right, now check this out. What do you suppose is going to happen? What will be what? It will be the, it'll actually be the, the, the third element. 
So do you see how you ask stuff when you have these predicates? What you do is you put the variable for the one that you want it, for the value, for, for the result that you, that you seek. And it will search for it and find what you seek. To him who seeks, <laughs> it will be given, right? Okay, so, 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 that's, so that's third element. But now, but now here's the thing. What, what about this? What about, if we do, what about if we do third element, only this time instead of doing, instead of doing A, B, C, D, suppose we do third element uh, A, B, Y, D, E, F, and over here we put the, we put the C here. Now what do you suppose is going to happen? Now what do you suppose is going to happen? Well, no, y will not, y is not equal to a list. Capital Y is the variable. So what is it, the ver so what is the instant, what does the variable get instantiated to? Y is C. Yes, y will be instantiated C because it's the third, you know, that's what third element means. All right, third element means, in other words, here's, here's what the question that we're at, here's, here's what it does. How can it be true that, see here's, here's L, X up here in the definition. X is the third element of L. C is the third element of this list. What matching can make that true? You see what I'm saying? What matching can make C being the third element of the list true? Well, if Y is instantiated to C, then C is the third element. And so it, it, and so it searches for it and, it and it finds it. All right? But now look. What's the definition of third element? Third element, when we consulted it, this is our definition. Third element's not built in. Here's the definition of third element. What is, how is it that the first argument, sorry, that the second argument is the third element of the first argument? How is it that this can be the third element of this? Well, if the list is shaped like anything, comma, anything, comma, x, vertical bar, the rest of the list, and this is the same as this. So it's all you got to do is, that's the fact. Look, you guys, you didn't have to write a loop. Or you didn't have to do subscript third one, you know. You just say that fact. Third element, do, do you see that third element will be true? Third, do you see that this will be the third element of this, if this list looks like this. Are you with me? Okay. Now the next one, now, and now this is how you write predicates. This is, this is, this uh, chapter is a big, is a big, is a big one. Now check this out. There's a, there is a built-in uh, predicate called member. We're going to rewrite it our own way, and we're going to call it my member. And before we take a look, actually here, let's take a look up here at the, def, at the specification for my member. My member x comma l. So what's the specification? x is a member of list l. Okay? So how is it, so how can we use my member before we see how it's implemented? Check it out. Let's say my Let's say my member, parentheses C, and now let's do A, B, C, D. Now, should this, so what, what, is, what does my member say? X is a member of L, of list, so X is a member of list L. The first one is a member of the, of the list of this. Is this a member of this? Obviously, is this a member of this? Is this element a member of this list? Yes. yes. So, I mean, just by English, that's true, right? Now, if I put if I put a semicolon here, what's going to happen? There is no, you know, it succeeded when it found the first one, because you see, if we do it like this, C D um, uh, C E, comma E and then close the list out and close our, all right? Now what's going to happen? It's going to be true, but now if I put semicolon, what's it going to be? 
true again because it's of the second one. And then I, now if I do semicolon, no more solutions. So now does everybody see how that worked? Yeah? And furthermore, you guys, check this out. What about if, what, what about if we do this? What about if we do my member C, now watch this, a variable. What do you suppose is going to happen? This is amazing. What do you think is going to happen? What does x have? Yeah, what does x have to be? What's has, what, does, what does the shape have, of x have to be in order for c to be a member of it? A list with c as the first element. But is there another way it could happen? What's another way it could happen? A list with C as the second element. What's another way it could happen? A list with C as the third element. What's another way? Fourth, fifth, sixth. So if I'm not going to do A, <laughs> right? So instead, what, what terminates the search? Return. Is everybody with me on this? Okay. So look, how, so, so, here, is, so here, is the, here is the definition of my member. So look at, what, look, look, look at what the definition of my member is. Well, first of all, x is a member of list L. So what's the base case? What's the base case? X is a member of, L, of list L. If, if, if list L has what shape? If it's shaped like a list with this, you know, with this vertical bar, with x as the first element of the list. Are you with me? But on the other hand, if it's not that, so like if this one failed, if this one was a C, it's fine. But if this one fails, then what? Now here's where it re now here comes the first big uh, issue with Prolog. There is structure in this argument, and it is simpler in this argument. So look. My member, do you see that x is a member of this list? If x is a member of the tail. It's not the other way around. This is a big paradigm shift, you guys. I'm warning you. Look, it says, what it's saying is that x is a member of this complicated list if x is a member of just its tail. It's not doing it the other way around. It's not doing... There's a tendency to think of this as being the formal parameter and these and using the formal parameters, you know, in the definition of the function. But that's not the way it works. There's more complexity up here. Don't think of this as being the formal parameter and using the formal parameter. You see what I mean? All right. So, but does this make sense? <coughs> now, the next one is um, the next one is is that we're going to look at is called um, oh rats. What did I do? Oh, let me quit this. Press the wrong key. The next one is called conk, which stands for concatenate, right? Now, um, and the, the specification for concatenate is L3 is a concatenation of L1 and L2. So concatenation takes three lists. This is one we're going to use over and over and over again. Actually, I want to demo one thing before we do it. <clears throat> Append does the same thing as conk, but append is built in. So uh, let me demo append. Append is, has three arguments. So if we do append, now watch this. If we do append A, B, the list A, B, and then the list C, D, and then capital X. Now, what does, what's the specification of, of conk? The third one is the what? Is the concatenation of the first two. So do you see that, how can this succeed? How is it that 
the variable x can be the concatenation of the list a, b, and the list c, d. Obviously, what, it, what, what is it? Yes, yeah, it's x is the list a, b, c, d. Are you with me? But look, check this out. Not only can we do it that way, we can say, we can say append a, b, and for here, we can put a variable for this one, and then we can do um, the list a, b, c, d here. Now check this out, you guys. So how is it that A, B, C, D can be the concatenation of A, B, and Y? That can only happen if what? Yeah. And so look, it does it. Can you do like A instead of A, B? Like, because not a list. Oh, well, it, it assumes that they're lists. Uh, append and conc assume that the, L, that the arguments are lists. So what if it's not? Well, uh, I'm... A good question, but it'd prob probably be an error. So, what are you asking? Like uh, this, a. like this would be a. Yeah, yeah that's will probably be an error. Well, no, <laughs> it's not an error. It's just no. Yeah, yeah. All right. So the thing of it is, is that is that we can do just to show you, just to show you that conk does the same thing. Let's do. Um, let's go back to our. So here, this. You know this example here, only instead of saying append, let's say conk, okay, which is, is kind of like our version of conk. See, it does the same thing as append. Are you with me? And if we do, and if we do, um, oh, but now check this out. What happens if we do, <clears throat> what happens if we do um, conk, L1, here, let's do it, nice style, L1, L2, A, A, B, C. Now, check this out, you guys. Talk about a paradigm shift. How can this be? How can list, now, because now the first one is a variable and the second one is a variable. How is it, how can we concatenate these, what must these variables be such that if we concatenate them, we get the list A, B, C? Yeah, there are more, there's more than one possibility. You're right. So the first one is L1 is empty, and L2 is list ABC, but what's another possibility? L1 is A. List A. BC. What's another possibility? A, B, and then C. And then what's another possibility? C. And now, is, are there any other possibilities? Yeah, there were four. Well, that's all right. Off, just off by one. Now, but now look, you guys. Here comes the kicker. What, how do we define L3 to be the concatenation of L1 and L2? Watch this. What's the base case? Do you agree that this makes a reasonable base case? In other words, if you concatenate the empty list with L, you get what? You get L. Are you with me? So that's the first thing it will try. If it tries that and succeeds, good. But if it doesn't succeed that way, then what do we have to have? Now, this is really strange. Here again, the complexity is in this first, is in the, the head of the goal. The complexity of the arguments is in the head of the goal. Look, what does this say? If you concatenate x vertical bar L1 with L2 to get x vertical bar L3, that will succeed if what? Because what is x vertical bar L1? That's L1 with a what? with an X in front of it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you concatenate that with L2 and you get X vertical bar L3, X in, in, you know, X in front of L3, that, is, that will succeed if what? Oh, come on. The, oh, please get this. It, uh, nope. <laughs> think, 
This is a big paradigm. This is the biggest, I'm, I'm telling you right now, this moment, this is the biggest paradigm shift of all. If you can get this, this is a huge paradigm shift. Do you, you want to... Oh, so therefore, what will, so you are right what you said, but then how would you write it? Con, yeah, conch, C O N C, -C parentheses, what? Two. L3. Yes. Excellent. Are you with me? This, you have to really think about this because we're specifying what we're not have to worry about why. And the complexity is in the, is in the first ar set of arguments there on the, uh, which is the head of the goal of, of, the, of the rule. It's in the head. Now, do, do you agree that if, that if you can, ca that, that if X, when, look, when will X, XL3 be the concatenation of XL1 and L2? If what? If L3 is the concatenation of just L1 and L2. If just L3 is the concatenation of just L1 and just L2. Actually, there's a picture of this. It's figure 3.5. This is figure 3.2. See? These so figure 3.2 shows this, shows these, the, how the lists are subdivided this way, okay? And look, w look, what's at the top up here? What we're saying is that, do you, actually here's a picture of what we just said. Do you see that X, can ca or X vertical bar L1 looks like this? And if L2 looks like this, what we're saying is that, is that, um, X vertical bar L3 will be the concatenation of, of XL1 and L2 if L1 and L2, if, 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 if L3 is the concatenation of L1 and L2. Does that clear it up a little bit? See, if what's, what it's saying is that X vertical bar L1 concatenated with L2 will be X vertical bar concatenated will be X vertical bar L3 if L1 concatenated, if, if L3 is L1 concatenated with L2. Here's another example. Here's another, here's another example that will illustrate that that's another example of this big paradigm, paradigm shift. Watch this. Let's do, now actually member is built in. Okay, member is a built-in function. We're going to do, we're gonna, so we're going to call it, this time we're going to call it member one. Okay, now here's how member one is going to work. Member one, XL. X is a member of list L. Are we doing something different than member, my member? Oh, good question. Wait, why are we doing member one? Wait, that's a good question. Why did we do, why am we doing my member? Because we did my member, didn't we not? Um, hmm, I don't know the answer to that question right offhand. Let's scroll down and reveal what the deal. Oh, this is why we're doing member one. Because, yeah, now I remember. <laughs> Now I remember one. <laughs> yuck, yuck. <laughs> because now we can write member with a single rule with conch. Yeah? It's going to be a single rule with conch. Okay, so just to show you that member one works, check it out. Let's do, let's do, um, let's do, Member one, um, A, we'll do one that's, that, that succeeds. Uh, so we'll, let's do A, and then let's do A, B, A, A. Sorry, let's do B, C, D.
and that's no, and if we do it again, but with this being an A, then it's true and there's no more solutions. But now, can we write this as a single rule with conch? So now a rule doesn't have, you know, a, a rule is an if. Is that right? It's a fact. A rule has an if, right? But it's a single rule. Okay, so X is a member of list L. A single rule with conch. Can we do that? Does anyone know, does anyone want to hazard how to do that? Let me give you the, let me give you the first one. Member one, X, L. If what? When is member, when is member, when is X a member of L? If you can concoct, if you can concatenate what with what to give what? Now think about this. This is really good. This is good stuff. Dun, dun, da, 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 dun, dun. If you conk, oh, I think you're on the right track. If you conk the, well, well, you said empty list though, right? Well, if you conk anything with what? The list that has X as its car, with any list that has X as its car, you get what? L. Well, that's when it will be in L. Do you see what I mean? Are you with me? Is everybody clear on this? If you concatenate any, so the, that's, a very, that's an anonymous variable, the underscore, right? So if you concatenate any list, or sorry, if, yeah, yes, any list. So if you concat any list with the list that has X as its car, with any list that has X as its car, you get L. That's when X will be a member. And so therefore you can just write member with this one, and it worked. I, I just demoed it, member one. Huh? So put that in your pipe and smoke it. All right. And so, see you next time.